Welcome to this short video presentation from Nemstar and Espion on the SISM program. This webinar will last approximately 20 to 25 minutes. My name is Sean Hanna. I'll be delivering this short video presentation. Uh, I'm a GRC and cyber warfare consultant uh, specializing in COBIT and ITAF frameworks along with uh, cyber warfare technology. What we're looking to cover in this sort of presentation is an overview of ISACA and the ISISM accreditation. What I want to do is to help you understand what ISACA and CISM is all about. And to do that, we're going to look at really two things, COBIT and ITAF frameworks from ISACA. So, let's get started. ISACA itself is a security assurance organization. It was established in 1969, and I believe it's very different to the normal security standards organizations you may be familiar with. ISACA was founded by its members to help its members uh, really provide assurance functions within information security. Really, a group of auditors that were asked to audit information systems and didn't quite know what the controls were, what the procedures, what policies should be in place. And ISACA was formed by the members to help the members to develop frameworks, frameworks that deliver results in real businesses. So this is led by consultants for consultants. And the two big frameworks that they've developed were COBIT and ITAF. The CISM program that we're here to talk about is focused on IS management. And IS management is about delivering assurance, and assurance is about delivering the requirements from your senior management team, something that will be measured and tested via the audit process. ISACA itself is predominantly audit focused, but what they realized was that organizations were having problem with the external and internal audit because they didn't know how to correctly manage information security, manage IT. We're talking about deriving business value from the investment made in information technology. And you'll notice that this is security, but it's security about delivering business results, about accepting the fact that there's risk inherent in all transactions and actions within a business. And it's about ensuring that there's a responsible framework around that to deliver results. So CISM is about COBIT, a framework developed by the auditors to ensure that when they went with their substantive audit process into an organization, ITAF would be the framework, that when ITAF was used to audit a COBIT compliant environment, then assurance could be delivered. In other words, you could achieve the goals of management, you could achieve what the auditors are looking to deliver. It's all about risk management. Rather than the highest possible security for a system, it's about having the right level of security, the right level of investment in information technology about availability, confidentiality, and integrity of data systems. ISACA, I believe, is not your average security organization. What they really have evolved into is an internationally renowned standards organization. Standards about delivering value for money and business realistic IT. But it's all about business drivers. You'll hear me going on about that. You aren't going to find a lot of information about you know, how to conduct a pen test. You're not going to cover how to configure firewalls. This is not what a SISM about, is about. It's about management, about delivering business-driven results. COBIT is the big framework, and that's the one that's going to be most important to us. So ITAF and COBIT itself, COBIT being the most important comes first. COBIT version 5 is about, and if you read down the bullets, it's about business. Have a look at many bullet points men mention business in here. Operational excellence, supporting business, realizing benefits of IT usage within a business. And that's what security is from an ASACA point of view. It's not about firewalls and restrictions. It's about defining risk and ensuring the business understands that they set the risk appetite and we deliver 
security solutions compensate with their risk appetite. I mean, have a look down that list. Operational excellence, maintaining acceptable level of service, optimization, compliance, strategic goals, not really what you might expect because this is security from a management perspective. IT is important, IT security, technical security, but this, this is something else. ITAF is like the other side of the coin. The two things go side and side. COVID is really SISM. ITAF is CISA. SISM is management. CISA is auditing, assurance, checking that those management policies, procedures, methodologies are what management want. You see, brings me to a very interesting question, and that is IT security versus information security. And I believe there are two totally separate things. IT security is about delivering technical competency. It's about configuring firewalls. It's about penetration testing, application security development. It's about managing a service desk. IT security implements. But that's the question. What does IT security implement? IT security implements what they've been told to implement. Who tells them? You see, information security is not about the technical delivery. It's about governance, risk and compliance. It's G or C. It's about understanding and building relationships within a business to make sure that senior managers are assisted in defining the requirements. How do you win? You, you need to know what senior managers want in order to deliver. And that's what information security is about. Taking business requirements in business language and translating those into technical deliveries. Technical deliveries that, of course, the IT department delivers. See, I really do believe there's a big difference. IS is a business-driven function. IT is a technical-driven function. This is usually a large gap in many, many businesses, from the smallest SME to the largest enterprise to public sectors throughout the world. And what I do as a consultant is I work with those organizations to make them realize the cost savings and the business benefit that can truly be realized by correct and successful governance, risk and compliance of IS. And that's really what we're all about. It's all about business. And you can see this is COVID really. It's all about managing IT processes with risk and value for money. Risk allows you to make sure that the right solution is in place. It's not about maximum security. It's about minimal acceptable security. Why? Why minimal? It's simple. The biggest business advantage, the most flexibility, the most money that you can drive, the most profit you can drive from an IT system is one that's flexible, dynamic and delivers what's required. By implementing too high a security, you're destroying the cost benefit of an actual IT system. And that's at the very fundamentals between governance, risk and compliance, something we call assurance. COVID and ITAF are real substantial tools. They're not academic theories. These are things that were developed by 110,000 consultants over the past 40 years. And we're talking about tools that they use, methods that they've used. We've talking about provable, repeatable business tools. See, it's not about being scared about standards and frameworks. It's about making sure the standards and frameworks you use deliver results. And I usually find that academic standards, one that were developed in a classroom or by a thinking group, I don't believe that they're easy to implement. COVID and ITAF, very much practical. 
What COVID-19 are all about and what this program is about is information security governance. So we're going to pose very difficult and challenging questions. Things like what is governance? I mean, governance is just the ability for senior managers to set a direction and for that direction to be followed. It's about separating governance from management. And senior managers own governance. Functional business manager own delivery. They own the application of the government, the day-to-day -day management. Risk gives us a set of tools to make sure governance is delivered correctly. We need to look at the risk appetite and we need to look at the direction of the business and we need to fill in the gaps. What does that mean in terms of IT support, infrastructure, about the details of SLAs and SDOs on an idle compliance service desk? What is it that managers want from us? And risk management is a set of tools that allows us to look at this seller quantitatively or qualitatively and to define a risk appetite. Compliance is the things that we must do within an organisation to ensure that we remain legal really. And compliance is part of the risk appetite culture of an organisation. So the governance of the things we'd like to do the risk is how we're going to deliver profit or value for money to a public purse. And compliance is about making sure we stay within the legal and regulatory frameworks to deliver the first two. Governance, risk and compliance. Governance, risk and compliance are what your senior management team are legally obliged to deliver. It doesn't matter if it's public sector, private sector or multinational organisations. It's the duty of senior managers to understand GRC but we are just one form of GRC and this is a message we have to put across IS is no more or less important than any other form of GRC and senior managers their job is to understand GRC they provide the direction the budget the oversight and control you see, if senior managers own all GRC, they own all information security GRC. And that's the problem. Information security is a technical competency. It's delivered in an IT department with highly technical controls. It's not understood by the wider business community. And in exactly the same way, IT is focused on technical delivery it doesn't understand the wider business and its requirements. The information security department, the function of information security, a CISM function, is about linking business with IT security and making sure that the business drives value and that IT knows what to deliver, how to deliver it, and very importantly, how that will be measured and of course the way we measure this is through a substantive audit the, the CISA part of the equation and what are we trying to do with COBIT? COBIT says this is how to deliver this it says this is how you're going to do it it delivers a practical model a set of structures and tools to try to deliver value for money from IT investment the idea is that ISACA really do put a lot of emphasis and trust on this model and to make sure that the model is implemented correctly they've created the CISM. The CISM is a program you go through to ensure that you have the minimum requirements to be able to take their models, COBIT, their very precious COBIT model and implement that within an organisation to truly understand how you take that model and make it real make it something physical you can touch and to do that they've split it into four areas that you need to be you need to be an expert in really there's no other word for it governance risk management compliance how to actually do program and project development and delivery how do you manage this function and of course incident security management as well security incident management if you like the actual then uh, application of some of the things that you'll be involved with at a more technical level you can see the split there the main one and two focused on business 
domain three and four trying to translate those business requirements into practical deliveries within control sets okay you can see it's not all even you can see that there's a split around that and you can see that what we have to do to get you past this is concentrate on a wide number of topics and equip you with understanding in those areas but one of the goals that we have, apart from delivering real practical knowledge, is we also are very much focused on the certification involved, the CISM certification, a world-renowned certification for information security professionals. And we've got a very hard exam at the start of this. 200 questions, 4 hours. Don't let these passing scores lull you into a false sense of security. It's actually based on a standard deviation from a mean formula. So that 450 points cannot equate into a percentage. If you work the percentage out, it's something like, what, 53%? But that's not the pass mark. You should be thinking more like 85% to get you past this exam because what we do is we take the average score and that's where we set the 450 so we do a standard deviation from the mean we eliminate the top 10 they eliminate the top 20 the top 10 and bottom 10 and we look at the standard deviation a complicated thing that we will go through during the course in much more detail summary 85%. You've got to get yourself to 85% in those areas. And you'll notice it's 50% business and 50% technical. If you want more on that, certainly go ahead, Google. Google for the SISM certification job practice. Uh, great stuff to download for free from the Asaka website. So if you want more about that, certainly read up on it. So what we're talking about is passing this accreditation for you of some real life knowledge. And you can see from that list what's involved. And you can see COVID and ITAF are bang up at the top of that list. And this sort of makes the topics that we'll cover through this. And you'll notice we're not just about four days in a classroom. This is a program. We'll expect you to have some technical capability coming in. So we do pre-course study driven by webinars and self-study. And then we get into the classroom. And even when we finish our intensive four-day classroom session, we then continue to support you with further webinars. Okay, the idea is that we want to make sure that you can get maximum value for money from spending four days of your uh, precious time on a hard-earned IT training budget. And I really do know how hard a training budget is to come across. We want to make sure that investment is really worth your while. So it does last a number of weeks. Okay. Five years are the typical IT business experience required from a SISM. So that's what we're trying to deliver to you to make sure that you have all parts of those five years of comprehensive equivalence. Okay. One of the things I would say to you is, look, we're not all about passing the exam. We're very much about delivering real life knowledge. And to that end, I am not a trainer. And I always say I get very insulted if you call me a trainer. I'm a GRC consultant. I deliver COBIT and ITAF uh, in multinational organizations all around EMA. That's what I do when I'm not in a classroom. So hopefully it'll deliver some real life examples, some notes from the field that I can bring you. Okay, so a little bit about myself again. Okay, just a remember, uh, reminder of my email and LinkedIn. We also will provide, obviously, Espion's uh, contact details as well. I find this a thoroughly engaging uh, use of my time. It's four days. It's very difficult. There's a lot of stuff to fit in, but I really do think that uh, it delivers when you get back into the office again. So leave you one last little uh, part and thought. Are you really sure that you understand that link that's maybe missing within your organization between management, the business, and between technical security? And if you think there's a gap in that middle, well then really, SISM is for you. Thanks for your attention.